Hey everyone, welcome to my Crown of Sorrow Flawless Guide. This video is intended for players who are seeking the Crown of Ease Triumph, and thus I'm going to assume all of you watching already know this raid well enough so that I don't have to get into the nitty gritty of the mechanics. If you've got no idea what you're doing, I suggest watching this video to explain the entire raid from start to finish. I also added some extra information in the pinned comment of that video that I didn't know about at the time. This guide, however, is mostly going to be me giving tips around each encounter to help you succeed in staying alive and being efficient to knock out this triumph. To activate the flawless run, you'll need all six players pulling their own individual lever at the same time. Two levers can be found in the upper left on top of this balcony area, with another two on the opposite side over on the right. Then the final two levers are hanging above the blue fire behind the rally flag, and in order to not get burned while trying to activate these, stand on top of the levers when pulling them. From this point on, a single death will send you back to orbit. Doesn't matter if it's after an encounter ends or not, so everyone should play it extra safe at all times. For the first encounter, here's some things I learned during our flawless runs. Take advantage of range in the first encounter. While being aggressive can help you clear out the enemies quicker, there is no reason to put yourself in unnecessary danger to beat an encounter faster. I was the cause of a wipe in the first encounter because I was playing too aggressively, and in fact I was the cause of multiple wipes during our flawless runs which didn't feel so great but at least it gave me a lot of experience in what not to do. Instead of running around on the ground the entire time like an ape, my teammate and I, who were in charge of clearing left side, resorted to hanging out on the raised structure that holds the giant statue. This meant we couldn't be swarmed by thrall or meleeed by knights, and we also had the high ground. Because I found it safer to use range, my loadout consisted of Ostringer, Jotun, and 21% Delirium. Jotun was really good against the knights, and using 21% Delirium meant that mopping up a few red bar enemies was going to give me that times 3 killing tally buff, which let me shred through pretty much anything. Really, any machine gun I used here performed pretty awesome. And also, standing up here allows you to use grenade launchers without worrying about Thrall getting in your face. Probably the most important part of this encounter is killing the Boomer Acolytes immediately as they spawn. It doesn't take them long to melt you, so you and your teammate need to be extremely aware of when they pop in. You should be calling out who can kill the Acolytes. If they're blessed and you're unblessed and you can't kill them, you should say the Acolytes are blessed, I need help with them, to make sure they go down quickly. Our team composition consisted of three Well of Radiance Warlocks and three Titans of varying subclasses, and while not as important for this encounter, you'll see later why we chose this setup. Well of Radiance is our go-to anyway for this encounter, as they ensure survivability against the Ogres, and using Phoenix Protocol means you'll have it back pretty often. I chose to run with Banner Shield because it allows me to completely block the Ogres' attack, as well as buff my teammates' damage. While this may be a little overkill, if you have two Banner Shields, one for each Ogre, you'll never really have a problem with surviving or killing them. Another thing that is very important for this encounter is to make sure your communication is clear. In our group, we did the double buff switch, which is where you switch once at the end of a round and then switch again at the beginning of the next round to make sure your buff is refreshed to reduce the stress of having to race against the clock. If you're going to employ this strategy, which I'd highly recommend doing, make it very clear to your team that you're going to be doing that. Make sure everyone knows that they need to get back to the vessel and stand inside of it again before going back to their sides. Some extra commentary can't hurt either. For example, in our run, I would call out things like Crystals incoming, or Everyone back to the vessel for a switch, or Ogres incoming, or Everyone stay at the vessel for another switch. These concise callouts can really help your team stay focused in a hectic environment and while you don't need to call out every single thing that's happening, it is good to make sure that in this encounter while everyone's together, that everyone is on the same page at all times. Keep a close eye on your blessing timer and communicate how much time is left when you start getting close to running out. Keeping an eye on your blessing timer is very, very important, and don't let that turn into Witch's Curse. For the jumping puzzle, I actually felt like I did a pretty good job of explaining the best approach to this in my original raid guide, which was having one team always take the rightmost crystal and one team always take the leftmost crystal, with the third team following behind. If you have two members not as confident in their jumping abilities, you can have them stay back at the entrance and basically be the guys calling out and helping shoot the floating crystals. You can also cheese this section of the raid a few ways, the easiest being a titan using a sword and lion rampants to sword fly across the entire chasm, similar to how you'd do it to get the free raid chest in Last Wish. 
I'll link those methods for that in the description if you're curious. A Titan can simply sword fly across the entire jumping puzzle while one player watches the roster ready to boot them if they mess up, and everyone else can just hang back in the first encounter area near the chest waiting for the Titan to finish. Once the Titan does make it across and gets to the next encounter area, this is when you can promote the Titan who made it to the third encounter, and everyone can leave and rejoin to spawn right next to him. You can also just jump across all the now raised platforms if you're confident enough. Honestly, the jumping puzzle section isn't that bad, but if you do have teammates who are terrible at jumping or are playing Warlock and aren't really confident as that character, then there's no shame in leaving. Now for the third encounter, aka Phase 1, this is where those Warlocks and Titans start to really make the difference. The best thing you can do in this encounter is actually be aggressive, unlike the first one. While you can play things at range and be fine, the longer you let the Wizards and Ogres stay alive, the deadlier they become. Things like shotguns and fusion rifles should make quick work of any elite enemies in this encounter. Now, being aggressive is going to be a bit difficult if you do have the boss like our team did, so in that case you're going to have to adapt a little and make sure to keep the high ground for most of this encounter. If you're playing mostly short range and need to get up close, then make sure to keep moving. Well of Radiances, Rifts, and Titans using Helm of Saint 14 and their Ward of Dawn bubbles are a really really great strat for surviving, especially if you have the Deception. When you are about to begin the damage phase, it's best to have one player distract the boss while the other goes to the Witch's Vessel. Unfortunately, the boss doesn't always stay aggroed on the one guy, so sometimes he can just run up to you and slice you in the back when you're trying to receive the buff, and this is a very unfortunate thing that happened to me, so in order to prevent this, if the boss is crowding around the vessel, put down a Well of Radiance or a nearby bubble. As for the actual DPS phase, we found the easiest way to execute this was with the Anarchy Glitch. Whoever is running Anarchy needs to make sure they will have the buff once the damage phase begins. Then using this buff and Anarchy, they can sit back away from the boss and use a few shots of Anarchy, which counts as a blessed player, to break the Deception Shield along with the other players. All five other players should rush in, and the Anarchy guy sits back far enough to not lose their buff. If you're worried about people dying from the boss's slashing attack, you can always place down a well right on top of the boss for the initial shield break. Every time his shield comes back up, the Anarchy guy should shoot a few more rounds at the boss, and since everyone else should have lost their buff by this point, you can have at least one player go in for the next shield break. The guy using Anarchy should keep an eye on his blessing timer, and make sure to remove his blessing buff on the last shield break before you kill the deception. Having 5 players able to do damage the entire time should result in a pretty easy 1 phase if you're using things like 150 RPM nade launchers with spike grenades, mountaintop, wendigo, prospector, rapid fire shotguns, really any high DPS weapons combined with one player using tractor cannon. If you're all standing in a well with lunafaction boots, make sure to be very cautious about where you're aiming your grenade launcher. Try not to strafe too much, and it's better to stop firing than to try to do damage while in a risky position. If there's a bunch of Thrall around you, try and get free of them and get to a safe spot to DPS from. If the boss starts to get too far away from where you set up your wells, the person with the tractor cannon can go behind the boss and boop him back towards your team. If you can get him stuck up against a wall or a box, this can really prevent him from going across the map. Just remember not to try and push him outside of the map, which can happen. For the final encounter, aka Phase 2, this is where we had the most screw-ups naturally and the most heartbreak since there are so many things that can go wrong. In order to minimize those issues, we had all of the Titans running the Ward of Dawn bubble with Hemel Saint 14 and all of the Warlocks running Well of Radiance. As soon as the three players grab their buff to go to their sides, try standing right beneath the boss to avoid getting hit by his fireball attacks. You can pretty much chill here most of the fight since the fireballs will just go right over your head and you won't have to dodge them. Just keep in mind that the Ogres and the Cursed Thrall do spawn back here, so maybe after the third night you might want to take some cover. The biggest threat in this encounter is definitely the Deception. Everything else is pretty easy to deal with, and besides calling out crystals for your teammates, there's not too much you can really change to have an easier time. But the Deception is kind of the wild card, so to speak, and it's where we need to eliminate as much danger as we possibly can. Similar to when you're under light in this encounter, the easiest way to survive is as soon as you see the boss summon the Deception, have the Titan put down their bubble right in the middle of your zone. Standing in the bubble and initiating the shield break is a surefire way to stay alive. If the crystal is about to come to your side next, remember to wait until after you destroy it to break his shield. And another tip is if the player with the blessing primes the Deception, 
and is able to get away fast enough when the other player breaks the shield, they will keep their buff. This can be helpful since you won't have to get another one, but remember that even if you do need to get a buff, just stand in the vessel circle and any buffed player can shoot the vessel from anywhere at the same time and grant you a buff. Remember also to kill every single last cursed thrall in this encounter because they can easily wander into another team's side and surprise them or just catch your teammates off guard. You need to be on top of killing the enemies that your teammate cannot kill, and vice versa. Now the best way to approach the damage phase is by having each team switch at their own individual stations before grouping up on the boss. Keep an eye out for the final crystal that might spawn around this time too, since you don't want a crystal to wipe you right as you're about to start DPS. When you are ready, set the Well of Radiance close enough to the boss so that the player with Tractor Cannon, if you have a player using it, can simply step backwards into the well and not be in too much danger. You can basically use all the same weapons I recommended for the last encounter, combined with any opulence mods or hive mods you have, things like the Emperor's Blaze mod which buffs well damage for the player who activated it, Striking Hand which increases your damage after a melee kill, Warlock should be taking advantage of empowering melee, and you can even use Anarchy if you want to help with stunning the boss when he tries to raise his arms. Also the blessed players of the group, specifically the blessed Warlocks, will want to consider standing in the back of the well so that they can throw their grenades down in front of them to clear any thrall or even just so they can melee in front of them instead of having to turn around or throw a grenade at their feet. Just remember to try not to move around too much during this damage phase. This is no doubt the most challenging part of the Shadow Seal, and any seal for that matter. At least Crown of Sorrow is one of the shorter raids with 80% of it feeling like it takes place in the first encounter. Flawless raids usually take a good amount of tries, so if there's one thing I cannot stress enough, it's don't get discouraged. If you make a mistake, ask yourself why did that happen and how could I have avoided it? The only way you're going to beat this is by not making the same mistakes over and over, and instead by actually learning from them. I messed up this flawless raid like three times, twice to the deception I think, and it feels bad, but the only way to beat it is to pick yourself up and keep trying. Hopefully these tips I offered can help you in your very own flawless run, and if you manage to get it, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and have a great day!